Hello, welcome to the Homeschool Mommy Mentor. I am your hostess, Donna Goff, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to train your children how to work. And this is the second video in the series. And today we're going to talk about little children and habit training. And this habit training can be used at any age, the earlier the better. But I want to uh, start with a scripture. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, he will not depart from it. Well, uh, something that they've been trained in that they won't depart from when they're old would be habits. Now, habits can be good or bad. We are creatures of habit. And we're either we fall into habits, a groove that we do regularly, even those of us who think that we fly by the seat of our pants are actually flying by the seat of our habits. We either have good habits or we have bad habits. And so when we train up a child in the way we they should go, in the way he should go, we are training him up in habits, good habits, so that when he is old, he will not depart from them. When we train them up, we are helping them develop the discipline of habit and a goodly character. Now, the word train in this verse is chanak, and uh, it means to train, to dedicate, to inaugurate, to initiate, and to discipline. Now, the word discipline means to teach. In the way train them up in the way they should go is direct. And it means direction, manner, habit, course of life, or moral character. Interesting. And should go is pay or mouth. It means commandment. It means edge, according, uh, appointment, according to a, their appointed end, if you will. And he will not depart. Su'ur, it means to put away, to depart from, to set aside, to remove, to turn from. So he is not going to depart or put away or set aside or remove or turn from those goodly habits or ways that we train them in. So how do you train a child? It's, it's really hard for an adult who has not had habit training to establish new habits. It, you know, I remember when, in my youth, they would say it takes three weeks to start a habit. To, and then it was 30 days. And really, I think it takes 90 days. It may take 180 days for adults who have not been habit trained. We live in chaos and we struggle. We may know how to clean a bathroom, but we may not know how to orchestrate all those different tasks that we learned as a child into a routine. Establishing a routine can be hard because we're not used to prioritizing. Uh, people rely on their phone. A lot of people don't even use their calendars anymore. And um, sadly, they wait until they're reminded by somebody texting them or whatever um, that they need to be somewhere. And that becomes difficult when you're trying to homeschool children. And you want to help them and give them the tools uh, so that they can be successful. And helping train them in habits is one way to do that. Training is leading by example. When we do this, we give them a pattern to follow. And that's why I do the, the Ditch the Stress webinar. It, it's to help moms first realize that in order to train their children in habits, it's helpful if they establish a few of their own. And the few habits in that help them take care of themselves and also take care of their home and take care of their family and homeschool. And it's like seven daily habits and one uh, weekly habit that we work on over a 90 day period. And so that's a good place to start with yourself 
And then once you have the idea of how to orchestrate a routine, it's easier to train them. And we lead them by example. And when we do that, we give them a pattern to follow. Training is showing the way. And as we do, we are also teaching timing. Okay, if we have a routine established, then we have a certain time that we do it. And so we just do it. If it's not, a, oh, sometime today I'll get dressed. And sometime today we'll do homeschool. And sometime, well, maybe this will happen. We get into this training of what we need to do. And it used to be that children were trained up in habits in the home, working side beside their moms who had a routine. And when they left their home as an adult, they had these habits and routines. They brought them into their own house and their own marriage, not knowing whether or not they would ever uh, have children, hoping that they would. And when the children arrived, the children were included in those routines and grew up in those routines and had those habits. So as we, as we include them in those habits that we have in the routines, we teach them timing. We give them a pace to work at, and that becomes a habit. We show them attention to detail. We teach them quality. We, uh, staying on task, work ethic, follow through, because we start a task and then our goal is to complete it and do it well. And we teach them follow through and work ethic. They learned work ethic and attitudes from our work ethic and attitudes. Work is a blessing. Uh, in the Bible, it says that God cursed the, the ground for Adam's sake. That means for his blessing. He didn't curse Adam in the labor. He cursed the ground to bring forth that labor, which provided the blessings for Adam in his life and what blessings the food that we get the raiment that we wear the shelter that we have are all byproducts of work they are great blessings and and if we have a bad attitude toward work we need to change that because work is going to be with us our whole life and what our work ethic and attitude about work is affects and impacts our children Training is doing it with them until they have the pattern. And those patterns become di the discipline of their habits and part of their personal nature. Start young, even as soon as they can walk and patiently work with them. With my oldest son, I would be sitting on the floor sorting laundry and he would be sitting next to me. And his brother was born, I was pregnant. And his, his brother was born 22 months after him. And he and he started um, following what I'd say. I'd say whites, and I put stuff in the white pile. Darks, and I put stuff in the dark pile. And so he was learning how to dif differentiate and sort. And he was learning to help, and he was working with me. He was one of my greatest organizers. He would sit and help me organize the food in the cabinets when we brought the canned goods home and and put them away and he would org organize them and order them he has a very ordered mind because of that so we start young with them and and as soon as they can help us so he was he wasn't even two years old yet and they can help they can help. The same thing with picking up toys. We do it with them. We don't just order them to do it. Yeah, sure, the child physically can pick up the toy and he can put it where it belongs. Um, he has the capacity to understand what you're asking him to do. But then he has executive function issues. Oh, it's my toy. And they start to play. They're not trying to be disobedient. They're distracted because they still haven't developed that impulse control yet. Instead of getting angry with them, the consequence, the word consequence, doesn't mean punishment. Consequence means result. The result of them not doing it 
is you walk them through it and help them do it until they get that pattern down. It's a constant, patient, loving teaching. This is parent-led. It's side-by-side, hands-on, setting a pattern of kind, uh, kind of learning uh, this way. And it will go the same way with academics or anything else. We need to be patient with potty training, patient with them learning to use a fork and a knife. It takes a long time for them to get that eye-hand coordination and the right amount of pressure. Pressure to cut with the knife and pressure to hold with the fork. That kind of pressure is a one of our senses. Proprioception <laughs> is our, our awareness of our body in space and also pressure. It's pressure that we need to hold a pen or a pencil. How much pressure do you put? How much pressure do you put when you brush your teeth? How much pressure do you put when closing your eyeglasses? You handle them with care or handling and carrying a goblet so that you don't break it. So it's it's parent led, it's side by side, hands on. On the other hand, training is not expectations based on what's age appropriate because all children the same age are not developing, not developmentally in the same place. It's not a factor of age. It's a factor of what they do with their body and their brain on the playground and walking and um, in imaginative play and learning the patterns of work working with you. So a child who hasn't had those experiences and are placated by, you know, the, the cell phone and playing the games, et cetera, that child is not going to have the same development as the child who's talked to and discussed with and trained and has the vigorous play outside and those kinds of things that develop their brain and their senses. It's not expect, training is not expectation based on knowledge. It's not just about them knowing what you're asking them to do. Again, there's executive function involved or even physical ability. Sure, they can pick up that phone and they could carry it over there, et cetera, et cetera. And we can sit there like a sergeant and bark out orders. But that isn't our role. It says we're supposed to train our children. So training is not expectations. Training is based on development. Training is not assigning. Training is not explaining or demonstrating. Training is not chore charts. Tra well, I'll tell you, maybe I'll take that back. Training is chore charts. It's training in procrastination. <laughs> training children is not about ordering them to do something. Training is not an obedience issue. Training is... Training to the level of independent um, self-initiative to do what they need to do is developmentally driven. So the best way to habit train is to work with them until they have the pattern and the development that they do it independently. I would like you to uh, join our Mentoring Our Own Facebook group. Ask your questions there. Meet other moms that are in the trenches. Uh, you'll want to subscribe below so that you don't miss the rest of our series and find out, okay, um, once we've got habit training, how do we get the rest of the work done? Because how do we get beyond personal habits of making our bed and picking up our toys? Um, some moms even train children to play on a certain area rug and they can play there. And when they're done, they put the toys in the box, but that has to be trained. So um, don't miss the series. So you can find out about the rest of the training. This is habit training and we'll get beyond that. Uh, join our newsletter and keep updated with the latest videos, blog posts and offerings. I do blog posts from time to time on, on these very subjects that we're talking about. And above all, until next time, enjoy the journey. <laughs>